Well, I would like to introduce everyone to the 2020 uh, Mexican National Champion on the road, Ulysses Castillo. Yeah. So, yeah. So we at the Elevate Webby Flex Pro Cycling Team and pretty much all of California, Mexico, the United States, everyone is super excited that Ulysses has won um, the Mexican National Championship on the road. And actually the day prior, Ule also placed second in the time trial uh, race as well. So that's two podium spots. And um, when was the last time you raced this year, Ule? The last time that I raced uh, was with the team in Taiwan, I think was the last Taiwan. time. Taiwan. <laughs> actually raced with Yeah, so. You were right. That was March. So those of you who don't it's remember, March. that was March when the team went to the Tour of Taiwan right as things were starting to shut down. So Ulysses had a great touring campaign there with the team who also obviously did really, really well. Um, but now what we want to celebrate is Ulysses and his success here um, at the national championship. So um, Ule, how old are you? Oh, 28. <laughs> okay, you're 28. Um, how many years have you been um, racing professionally? Oh, uh, six years. Six years. Yeah, yeah, six. So some of that was with us, and then you went to our friends at Jelly Belly, and uh, then you came back and you joined us here at Elevate Webuplex. And um, do you remember how many years have you been racing at the national championships? Oh, I think my last six years yeah okay and and of those six years what was the highest placing you had had prior to this year oh uh, I, I finished second two times last year and two years ago then yeah was the closest one closest close close yeah so i mean getting the victory and then uh i was looking at my questions here okay so looking at the race where is it located it was in Aguascalientes, um, where is the velodrome, the, the faster velodrome in the world. So it was there. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Ule, you guys go in and finish Agu on the velodrome? Where? Where is that geographically, Ule? Uh, it's kind of in the middle of Mexico, it's in the center. Like, not too Is it high elevation? It is, yeah. It's almost 2,000 meters uh, from sea level. Okay. So, How far did you have to travel? Oh, uh, uh, just two hours because I came here a month before because I live on a sea level. So I knew that if I want to do well, that I have to come early. So I was here for, for a month in Leon, a month before for, for training, for altitude training. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Smart. You're thinking. That was good. <laughs> um, and, and on the race itself, on the course, did, uh, did you gain a lot of elevation there? Tell us a little bit about maybe the distance and what the course was like. Uh, it, it wasn't like, like climbing. It was more flat, but it was kind of technical because you get like into a small town and you do like one, two, three, three, three corners uh, like in less than 300 meters. So <laughs> it was really twisty and then after that, you get like a like a segment of pave, like cobblestones, okay. uh, for like like a hundred meters only. But it was really bad, like like an actual like actually broke, like like bad. And then was the section of like two k's and a half, almost three k uh, of their of their road. And then you came out out of that, and there was like. Like uh, kind of really windy road and like a narrow one. So, yeah, it, it was it wasn't like like a climbing um, circuit, but it was it was hard. Yeah, in technique. Yeah. Well, and you're you're known on the team for like really excelling in all scenarios and all different types of like the more like bad environments we can throw at Ulysses, you historically have really risen to that occasion, right? And if we were like, oh, it's a really bad day, Ule will be good. Or, you yeah. know, like, you'll just ride through anything and we're like, oh, there he's coming. So, you know, I think, you know, just hearing that, I'm like, oh, this is, this is a course that would really suit Ulysses. Now, 
Um, did you, since you were close there, did you go and free ride the course? Like, did you know where those turns were? Yeah, I, I, I did like a week before we did the, the road race. It was kind of big. So it was 30, 33 Ks for a lap. So we did two laps and then we went to see the time track course too. Uh, so yeah, and yeah, and I, I I remember, I used to live for a little bit in Aguascalente, so I actually knew how the road was. Just, just I was missing the, the, dirt, the dirt road and, and the, yeah. Uh, yeah, the cobblestones. Yeah, but, but oh, that's yeah, awesome. I, I, we went before. Good, good. Hey, hey, Ule, question for you. We saw, uh, we were watching video, okay? And when we were watching the video, we seen the video of like all these guys going crazy for that pave. It looked like you guys were going so fast and like there were just like people everywhere. Like it was like everyone scattering all over. Yeah. What was that like? Was it really fast running? What was going on? Tell us about that. Cause you hit, how many times did you hit that pave? We hit five times the pave, and you you get into the pave of like only like 35, 40, 40 k an hour because you was coming. Remember that I say for like a three corners before that, so it was really twisty, okay. and and the first corner that you take to the left, it was actually a, a bump. You know the the wall for the, for the for the cars. It was actually really bad, and it was almost on the on the left, like on the corner. So yeah, you was <laughs> the like speed bump. on the corner and like jumping, and yeah, it it was cool. I kind of I like you it. liked it. Yeah. I know you yeah, of liked course. It. <laughs> so so you speed bump, jump into the left turn, right yeah. left, and then here you go. You're gonna hit some pave. Yeah. yeah. So that was, sounds like a real Mexican national championship right there. Like it's, true, yeah. without some speed bumps, was uh, yeah, that's that's for <laughs> yeah. sure, dude. It's yeah. gotta be a it's gotta be a little hairball. Yeah. It's be your Mexican Mexican national championship for sure. All right. Well, and then so looking like it looked like you know if we were we were able to watch a lot of the video of how the race went down, um, it looked like the field was really strong and like very dynamic. Maybe kind of let us know. Maybe Brian has some more like leading questions about how the race unfolded for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The the field was really strong, so. Like most of the good riders, they are like really close from where where where, where national was. So and they have like their friends really close, so they they really want to win, and they have like a full team too. So for me, it was actually kind of impossible to win because it was just focused for that race. You know, we don't have any race. Uh, in the whole year so they was really focused for that one but i was really focused too so uh i was training a lot and i was feeling good uh and yeah i was really excited about it because like you know like a lot of people like have like more time free and they was like riding more so a lot of my my friends from from my hometown and another friends that are real close they they have they, they live really far away from where national was like they travel like 10 hours driving just to to see the race and another one they was like really in training so they just get into the race in case that i get a flat or something they can give me a wheel so <laughs> so we'll do that uh, and i think that gave me the extra that for to, to take the win it was nice that's awesome so you, you had secret teammates you had like you're you're like the Sandlot gang of of a, of a group of group of riders that had your back, but not everybody knew it. Yeah, yeah, I actually have. I have. <laughs> if I count all of them, I think I have more teammates than than the rest of the. Oh, like, that's awesome! <laughs> so it was cool. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. super cool. Ule. You know, for everyone listening, when we would always go to like Tulsa um, or some of the other uh, summer events, you know, nationals is usually kind of typically it's before the tour de france right ule like that would yeah. be when you guys would do it right and that's when america would do it too right yeah yeah it's the same thing same thing right and so um it's always been really difficult for me as ule's teammate because it would be like we'd be talking about you preparing for nationals and it was either you and alfredo or you and edder when he was on the team or whatever and it's like 
you guys never had any teammates. You guys were just strong as an ox and you guys would be riding great and you guys would want to win nationals. And I just, I always like my heart would go out for you as your teammate because I'd be like, man, I wish I was like, I wish I could just like, I wish I could get there and help you, you yeah, know? Yeah. And, and, and so when you guys would come back from the race, you guys were so strong, so fit. Right. And then, but it would always be like, Oh, I had a mechanical or, Oh, it was four guys against me and I couldn't. And so when I watched the video of you winning and I saw like, there was a lot of guys that had teams. And so the fact that you came out on top, I was like, Oh man, I just wanted to jump through the video and give you a hug. Man. <laughs> I was so excited for you. But like, this is a really big deal, not just because you won the race, but because you had to overcome like these insurmountable odds. Like you've been trying for a long time and normally guys on elevate, you know, you guys are always strong, but you, you don't have teammates in your home races. And it's very difficult because you travel so far to race with us all year. You know what I mean? Like, what was it like to win? Yeah. How you say like, it's, it's always a little bit harder for us to race here. Like just with one or two teammates uh, with against the, the whole team, you know, they have like 10 guys, so 12 guys. Uh, but the good thing of this circuit was, it was hard for everybody, you know, like on the dead road, you, you are on the wheel, but you are not actually drafting that much. So then you came out of the dirt, it was like kind of crosswind and stuff. Uh, so you actually don't have like that much draft too. So at the end, like I knew like everybody it was gonna it's gonna it was gonna think that the secret was just easy and they was just gonna go crazy from the beginning. So that was really good for me. So we're just saving for after so trying to attack after the three hours or so two hours two hours and forty five, something like that. Okay. Uh, so I just did that, just waiting and I was pretending that I was like that I wasn't feeling that good, so I don't have like anybody on my wheel when I saw that so I just went as hard as I could until the end and when I crossed the line I have to say like that I was crying like like it was all the people on the finish line and I just want to go through and get my space and start crying like where wherever like nobody can see me but you know there was my friends over there so I get stuck there and and I and I couldn't hold it and I they actually there is a video there is a video somewhere there there when I was crying so it was kind of embarrassing but well uh, I was really happy for that for that oh, victory you should be brother I mean we're so proud of you buddy we're so proud of you I mean like oh you you always race with so um, so much pride and emotion like you you know it's you're not a robot when you ride your bike and I love that about you like you know I mean, I, everybody knows it's like, man, you're the man, you're the man, dude. Like everybody's cheering for you, but for you to be able to ride and finish that solo, like, man, if we just kind of think about the last couple of years, you know, last year you rode really good. I mean, obviously Winston Salem was really big for you. I mean, yeah. like you've been riding, you've just been leveling up, bro, and getting better and getting better and getting better. And like, you're better in all of these situations. You're sprinting really good. You're climbing really good. You know, you're really smart on the road. You're riding breakaways really smart. Like, ah, just, I'm so happy for you. So when did you get away solo? Like what was kind of set that table for us? Like, did you have to really attack or was it, what happened there? Yeah. Uh, so was the fifth lap, last lap? To the end, it, we was already just like 10 guys up the road. You know, we was attacking the lap before a lot. Then we get on the breakaway. And the good thing, like everybody start working. So okay. that was really good for me. And then when we hit the, the there, I knew that, the, that I can try there. So I was just waiting to them because like, you know, when we, we get into the road, into the dirt, Everybody gets so excited, so everyone just pushing hard. Yeah. So I just wait until they like kind of slow down, and then I, I went as hard as I can. It was like 30k to go still. Oh wow. Yeah. So it was, oh, a, wow. it was a big one, but I, you know, but I was feeling very like, strong, and I knew that that I can. If I take like the the no the 
if I take a, a good cap, I knew that I can hold it. So yeah. I just went for that. Because on the, on the bunch, there was like a really, really good sprinters. Uh, I was feeling kind of strong for that, but I don't want to risk because it was like re- super twisty at the end, you know, with the, with the speed bomb and all that. So I just tried for that. And I say, well, if they catch me, so we, we, we go for the sprint. What was the gap? What was the gap at the finish? Because they weren't even in the frame. When we saw the picture, like, you're by yourself. What was the total gap to the field uh, to second place? Yeah, it was, uh, I think it was 130, one minute and 30 seconds. Okay. So how did it go out? That's what I want to know. Like, when did they, like, you don't, anybody, you know, they all know you want to win. And you start riding, like, and there's still 10 guys. Like, nobody's letting Ulysses get a minute and 30 because they're crazy. Because nobody, you're not coming back. Right. So I know that they know you want to win. You're obviously attacking going on the road. Did the gap stay small for a while? And then eventually they stopped chasing or because those sprinters were present, did they not chase? What happened? Yeah. So at the beginning, they was like trying to get to me by themselves. So they was trying like one guy and then one of the guy uh, in the video, you can see if he was really close to me, like, or like, four or five bikes okay. on their on the red on the third section there was two guys like chasing me and then when the guy that was in the front he pulled over the second guy he was just chasing because he got a flat he's a really good one he's a mountain biker mm-hmm. and he didn't come through so they slowed down so the the other eight guys they came out to them and then another guy tried the same way Oh wow! And and he, he was really close to, but he didn't catch me. So there was a f- four guys from the same team on that breakaway. Four oh, guys. Wow! Four <laughs> guys. So okay, why didn't they just put all the guys on the front and start chasing? Like, if I'm that team, you don't let Ulysses go because you know you don't have any teammates. Like, one hundred percent, you're gonna go all in. What happened? Yeah. Like, like. Like, did they put someone on the uh, on the front? Do you know what happened? They they did it after they tried to like the strong guys. They tried to came to me by themselves, so they yeah. could so they put their guys chasing, but they put at the beginning just one guy. So oh. we start with twenty seconds when they start chasing, okay. and then it was like thirty seconds, and they put yeah. another guy, and oh. then it was like forty seconds, and they put okay. like three guys on the front, and really? they're still rolling. But the the gap it was at the same, you know, for, there was like thirty seconds, thirty seconds, and then those two guys they were chasing first. They they started like kind of cramping yeah. and that stuff. Yeah. Like they, they they was done, and then was just one guy chasing. Well, then the 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 gap was forty seconds, and there was like that like fifty seconds, and. And then was like one minute thirty. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So how long how long were you solo? Like I mean you said it was on the fifth out of five, so it was on the final lap. And so, you know, how many kilometers or how much time until you crossed the finish line? It was thirty K and when when I went it was thirty K to go. Yeah. Wow. And at what point what at what point did you realize that you had the win? I I did realize like probably like 10 k to go that I that I, okay. that I yeah. made it because it was was like all my friends like on the caravan chasing me you know it was like four guys yeah. on on one car like screaming like hey you how one yeah. one twenty was only 10 k to go so I knew it Good. that I that I got it but I was really worried you know because like the road was was bad and at the end was super twisty and I was like oh. I, so don't don't flat, don't crash. You got it. Just don't yeah. do nothing crazy. Yeah. No, wow. it was it was pretty cool to watch. Like the, you know, like you said, like you had say like the caravan. I feel as if it was like the caravan and then Ulysses people like coming with you. And it's you know like Brian talks about like Tulsa Tough. Like whenever we go to Tulsa Tough, like Ule or you know when we have Fabrizio, you know or Alfredo, like you guys have like a crew. And like, I can just, you know, envision in my mind, like they're all on the motorbikes and they're all coming and like cheering you in. And like, 
like it makes me feel like oh man like emotional because I know like what you you know the excitement that you had going into there just to have so many people supporting you and obviously us here you know in California and in, in the U.S. are so excited for you you know I watched one video where your cousin I think you were like one turn to go like you Sally and I'm like she's gonna knock you off the bike like <laughs> she was like on the yellow line and you were coming wide and it was like it was so exciting and it's just I think that's why I really wanted to talk to you kind of here on video to share with all of our fans and, and partners what a like monumental experience this was for you and how that can trickle down and and bring that excitement to the program. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah actually, one of my friends was like next to you selling that video you say he crashed and he broke his frame like, like oh. I don't know. He, he was with the fork in one hand and he was on the wheel and then <laughs> Cause he like, brought, he was like yeah, <laughs> super, <laughs> yeah, that was super super nice. I think, uh, you know, when when I went, I was for ten k kind of good, but then I start feeling kind of like tired and all that. But just thinking on all my friends and my dad was there too. Uh, oh, good. You, know, you guys, like just thinking about that, uh, that that gave me the extra. So I was without legs just going I don't know where I, I get more more power and just keep going <laughs> yeah all the the mind is is uh is good for a bunch of watts you know like when the mind is on your side you can it's amazing you know what you can do and it just puts it's all the work you've done you know going to going there early doing altitude training you know having your nutrition dialed all the stuff sets you up for success and then it's you know, we know you're probably a, a marked rider. Everyone's like, no one's going to let you let these just go. You know, yeah. it, even if you're just like, oh, I'm going to ride at the back, like they're going to call, <laughs> you know? So I think it's, and coming off of your, you know, I think kind of one of the last questions looking at, you know, your success in the time trial, like, you know, you got second in the TT. Was that something you had expected kind of the day before? No, actually no. Like, um, I did it just because a friend of me like, hey man, you have to do both and and why? Because the state wanted like like if you get a medal, it's really important for the state. You know, here yeah. in Mexico, like the state is the one they pay like the bills and that stuff for go to to go to to nationals and that. And so they 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 wanted me to do it. So yeah, but actually we 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 kind of train nice on the TT, one day we did like 200K on the TT bike and then another day Ooh. we did like 117 and wow. super bad. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but I, I never expect like finish second on, on that time show, but you know, I have good, good, like good legs, like it was super windy. So I think what that was kind of actually good to me you know, because like I was feeling super comfortable and on the bike and and I feel my position error was good. So good. yeah, it was nice. It's like driving, driving the echelon at the Tour of Utah last year. Like you and George just on the front, like in the crosswinds, you know, the, you're, you're no, no stranger to those long, you know, threshold efforts. And so, you know, I think that's, and I think it's really exciting for your state. And I think I also saw like, um, cause you're from Sinaloa, correct? yeah yeah and and that the the women's winner for the mexican national championship is also from your state correct yeah she's from the same state for the for the road yeah in the road race that's awesome i think that's that's a great testament you know for in you know you should be like you said not only for the the mexican national championship but i know you've you've worked really hard to represent your state really well you know and to be be true to that and I think that shows you know a lot of work and dedication like really paying off for you and the state so that's really exciting yeah it was well I have to say like uh, we, we are from the same state because we we was born there but I represent yeah. another one like here where, where I am right now and the state is Guanajuato and I am in, in Leon is the city so oh, okay but but we, 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 we was born on the same state that the, the girl okay. that she won and me. That's awesome. Cool. 
Well, you know what, you know, now I've obviously you just told us before we started this that you did a nice big five hour ride today and you know, a good solid ride yesterday. What's next on, on your radar here? Oh, uh, we are keep training good because uh, we're going to, to Wolves, to the World Championship on Italy. Uh, good. On 20, like, it's a time trial and then the road race, like two days, two days later. So that's... And that's in, is that the end of September, correct? Yeah, yeah. So we right, got to so stop there, though. Two weeks. We, have to, we have to talk about what a big deal that was. Because remember at training camp, Ule, when you and I were talking... And you were like, well, maybe I could like, you know, hope. And of course, we didn't know anything about the pandemic at the time, but that was really the goal was to get to Worlds, Worlds. you know, and hopefully maybe make the Olympic spot, which obviously that's postponed for a year. But dude, you're going to World Championships. Like that is so hard for like, I mean, how, only one only one spot for men in Mexico or how many? Yeah, we, we just have one spot. So one yeah. spot. So I want everyone listening to think about that for a second. How many people are in Mexico? Total. A lot. Obviously. A <laughs> <Yeah>. lot. <laughs> a lot. Right? Like a lot. Right? And you are the one, you are the number one in the country, and you're going to represent Mexico in the world. That is amazing. This is not like Belgium. They have a bunch of people doing this. This is not like Italy, France. You know, they all have multiple, they have, you know, six, seven, eight teammates. This is not yeah. that. There is one spot. And Ulysses Castillo is the man that's going for yeah. Mexico. And it's like, dude, I am so proud of you. I know everyone's super proud of you. What, um, luckily you've been over to Europe a bit and done some racing. Do you know anything about the course? What's going on? Yeah, it's super hard course. So yeah. it's like <laughs> over 5,000 meters uh, on, the, on, the, on the road, like on the race. Uh, it's uh, 245 uh, kilometer so it's gonna be a challenge <laughs> yeah. when are you guys going over there you said in a couple are you going early how, how early we are going on 20 of september okay any so, covid okay. stuff you got to deal with uh anything there for your travel do you guys have to quarantine anything like that uh, they say that we don't have to do quarantine okay uh, we're gonna double check i'm gonna double check but okay. we have to to do those tests like to see yeah. if we have the covid when we get there, we, sure. we have to do all that. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Well, I don't have to tell you. Wash your hands, man. You'll be fine. But uh, that's good, man. You're gonna have easy travels. You're gonna get over there. Is the race at altitude up there, or are you staying no. here in Lyon, doing continuing your altitude training block before you go to to Worlds? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna do that. Like keep keep training on altitude, and and Worlds is gonna be on the sea level. So I think that that's it's good. That's a one point. That's awesome. Yeah. That'd That's really big. exciting. That's really exciting. And I know you've been working with uh, Benito, right? Like a, a mutual friend of ours, Benito. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so yeah. excited. I'm yeah, so he's excited. Cool. He's a good dude. Yeah, he, he always told me uh, about you guys. He's so excited. Like, <laughs> yeah, we spent a lot of time. Yeah, he's very these, proud uh, of you. Yeah, he should be very, very proud of you. But Benito is such a... He's such a good man. He's such a good man, a great coach, obviously a great coach. You're working with him, but we always hang out at the, at the coaching seminars. He and I always get some coffee together and shoot the breeze. He's a good dude, but uh, man, I'm so proud of you. And I was really excited for him. That's great. Um, so what do you think? Any predictions for world championships? Do you want to go out on a, what do you think? What, what's going to happen? Um, I really want to get like on the goods breakaway and, and do my best on the breakaway. I'd like to be the last guy the peloton cut. If that doesn't happen, <laughs> so I I want to finish on the front row. Okay. Has that uh, what's the history of Mexican riders and nationals? How's that tell tell me what that is cuz you you know a lot more about that than I do. Yeah, um, we have a while with without like a good rider like doing something well at at a world so. Yeah. Yeah. You're it's going to change it. I hope, man. Yeah. I'm, You're going to do it. Yeah. Thank you, man. So, okay. The goal is la last man standing from the break. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And make the front group. You heard it oh. here first. Ule is going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and uh, how about, what do you, what do you have sitting there next to you, Ule? We want to see the jersey. Oh, it's right here. 
Awesome. Oh. <laughs> ole, that's ole, ole, ole. Oh, that's, that's so awesome. great. That's really that's super cool. You have a jersey. So, yeah, you have a jersey, and now we got to make you a super cool one. So with with yeah, some please. team elevate blue. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're, we're everybody, you know, in the U.S. here and, and our teammates in Canada, like, and, and actually are very proud of you. And one of your former mechanics from Jelly Belly, Jeff Rowe, he commented on our Instagram with a great idea that you become the people's camp champion. You are the champion of the Americas. All um, of them. Since, all the Americas. <laughs> all of them. Well, this right? is the because, champion yeah, of all of the Americas. <laughs> from Mexico, Canada, and the United States, you're the champion. So I think it's a very fitting, and he was he was adamant that you're the people's champion. And I think I don't think there's a single person in any peloton you've ever raced in that would would think otherwise. So you know we're super proud of you and proud to have you part of the team. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, you know but we yeah, love you, so brother. Think... We love you. You're the man. This <laughs> is yeah. this brings us so much joy to see you. Uh, race it until you see you win that bro and for you to go to worlds like this has been a really sour year for a lot of people and a and, and a really challenging year and you bringing a lot of joy to people's lives and and seeing what's possible by being disciplined by being strong by staying you know fit and doing all those things and uh, I might go out on a limb here and say maybe maybe it was something to do with those whiff races we were doing with Jordan in the early summer <laughs> Yeah, was that, it, was that, yeah, that jump started it, right? That was the jump. That was started. super hard. It was, it was because of Jordan. Jordan, yeah. that, you know, essentially Jordan <laughs> got us to do that. So. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we have to do that again. Oh, so I don't think we have to do that again. I don't know if we yeah. have to do that again. I might, <laughs> I might be okay with doing it again with you, but I don't know if we have to. <laughs> we should, yeah. I love it. It was, hey, it was awful to watch. I just tell you that Brian down here set like a FTP every time you guys did a race. <laughs> so. oh, it was painful. Oh, that's super hard. Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. Yeah. It was so hard. That's good, but it was so hard. It all it all pays off now. So thank you, Ule, for taking a, some about 30, 40 minutes here with us today on your uh, busy training day, prepping for World Championships. So we can't wait to. Uh, share with all of our friends and followers um, and partners your uh, kind of path here to Worlds in Italy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're proud of you, brother. Hey, we love you. Couldn't I be more proud too. of you. Hey, man, you let us know if there's anything we can do for you leading into this uh, event. You know, we got your back. Just know that it's not pressure. It's like we are the wind at your back, bro. Everyone is so proud of you. As long as you give your best, that's all that we ask. And uh, if there's anything we can help you with, you let us know, man. But like everyone is so proud of you from Paul all the way down to all the mechanics, your former teammates. I mean, everybody is just like going nuts that you won this thing. It's, this is, this is a life changing thing, bro. And the fact that you did it solo with a minute 30 beat all those teammates, overcame all those things, rode through those crazy pave sections, like, man, you are the people's champion. You are the people's wow. champion, man, now Thank and forever, you. bro. Right. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.